Jesus, the well of life, is approaching a woman who is coming to fetch water from the well of Jacob. Jesus, the well of water himself, is going to sit. The Bible is saying he was thirsty. He is going to sit by the well of Jacob. The woman said, Why do you ask me of a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. This woman, this statement of Jews not having a relationship with Samaritans, she is not the one who created this issue. She was born in a system that was there already. Even those maybe that gave birth to her were also born in a system that says Jews don't have a relationship with Samaritans. Which means it was a law or a way of thinking of where they are coming from. We are still having a challenge like that in the lives of many believers that we live according to laws and rules that we were just born into. But sometimes they are not even in the word. But those laws are right to you in your life as a believer. If I try to argue with you now, you will fight me because you grew up in that system. So Jesus here was trying to present something to this lady that you are not supposed to be stuck in the laws of old because there is another level of God that he wants you to experience that is not bound by division, by hatred, and by laws. That same issue we are talking about of this woman is still in the church today. The church still has divisions. The church you go to, the church I go to, the church my neighbor goes to, we have different beliefs. Some of the beliefs are not even in the Bible. Sometimes the laws and the beliefs that we grow up believing today were created by men, not by God. And those beliefs are channeling you as a believer and you are missing out on the real truth that comes from Christ and the Holy Spirit that has been poured out to the church. Because when the Holy Spirit is in the church, the Holy Spirit is not a spirit of division. It's not a spirit of segregation. It is a spirit of love. So this woman, although she was a believer, and she says that our father Jacob, from their past, love was not manifesting in her life. Unity was not manifesting in her life. Like our churches today, there's no unity manifesting, no love manifesting, because we are guided by laws and rules of religion not of the Holy Spirit. Why do you ask me of water? You are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. The Pharisees and the leaders of the church went to Jesus and said, what do you say about the issue of divorce? Because Moses told us that we must divorce and offer a certificate of divorce. Then Jesus replied and said, it was not like that from the beginning. In the beginning, the scripture says, these were the words of Jesus in the book of Matthew, a father shall leave their house or whatever, their parents, shall be joined to the wife and they become one. What God has joined, let no man separate. That it was like this from the beginning. But Moses put this law because of your hardened hearts. So that law of divorce came because Moses saw the hearts of the people and he said, for me to guide these people, let me say you must do one, two, three. So the law that was in the church that time was put because of Moses' observation, not revelation. Many of us, we grew up in churches where they say, you must not watch TV. That is not the law coming from God that people must not watch TV. But the leader of the church saw an impact, a negative impact that church, I mean the TV has on the people of that church. 
And they put a law that if you are a member of this church, you must not watch TV so that you will not be polluted. But the times have changed. Now we have 24-hour free-to-air channels that preach the gospel on TV. Right? Which means the generation that is now should not attack or fight, rather, to say, why did you stop us from watching TV? No. They stopped you based on that time. And the law they had put it. But when times change, you need to move from observation to revelation of the Holy Spirit for you to understand what is happening now, not in the past. Churches today, Christians today, families today are divided based on food. We don't talk to this one. We don't enter their church because they eat certain foods. They eat certain animals. We are focused more on not eating food, but sin is dominating us. We are judging each other about who eats pork, who eats, but sin is dominating us. Which means we are guided by religion, not the Holy Spirit. So this woman was guided, or molded rather from the little age, in a lifestyle of religion, of laws of men, not the Holy Spirit. 2,000 years later, as we are sitting here, we are divided, we are confused, because some of us, we are still stuck in religion. We have abandoned the Holy Spirit. Peter, when he had an encounter with God, he is praying by the roof. God wants him to, I mean, to go and minister to Cornelius, if I believe, if, I, if I'm correct. And the Bible says, while he was there on the top of the house, he had a vision, and God opened a blanket of, 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 of food in front of him. He said, Peter, rise up and eat. Peter stood up and said, no, I cannot eat this food because this food was prohibited from being eaten. Things like pork, things like animals with certain hoofs and all those things. In the Old Testament, it was prohibited. This is Peter speaking to God. Then God said, Peter, you cannot call unclean what I have called clean. Do you understand? So God was trying to remove this man from religion to spirituality. In spirituality, we don't call things unclean what God has cleansed. So God told the men, there are three men who are coming. Don't deny them. Rise up and go to their house. Because the man that God wanted him to be saved was regarded as unclean according to the religion. But according to the spirit of God, God wants everyone to be saved. So he was cleansing everyone. But the man of God here could, be, could, could have been a hindrance to a deliverance of someone because they are stuck in religion. In the church, it happens today. The story of the prodigal son, the brother who remained behind, is bitter that the father is saying, your brother was dead, now he's alive. Because he's stuck, he's stuck in laws. So laws hinder salvation. Human doctrines hinder salvation. Because when Jesus met this woman, Jesus had an issue that he wanted to present to this woman that he also presented to the church. But the church rejects the offer. If you know who is asking you of the water, the gift of God, you would have asked me and I would have given you living water, which simply means the Holy Spirit. The church today was left with a helper, the Holy Spirit to help us. But many of us as believers, we neglect the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We say our fathers said, those of old said, in our church we say, in our ministry we say, what is the Holy Spirit saying? The move of God in our lives and in our ministries is quenched because we have boxed God into laws. God must move because he moved like this, in this way. He must move like this. He must talk like this. But the Holy Spirit is there to lead us to what God wants us to do in the present time. Many Christians today, they are in the church 10 years, 20 years, 
but they have not surrendered to the Holy Spirit. They are still being led by laws, rules of men, doctrines of men. And some doctrines we give, especially as leaders, some are there to put order, but it's not by revelation, it's by observation. But God is saying, yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yield to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, is teaching you. Because when the Holy Spirit has entered you, he is the one who will help you to grow. When the Holy Spirit impacts you as a believer or impacts the church, the Holy Spirit does not start by attacking the well of Jacob. Jesus did not say, no, this well is not the right one. This well is bad for you. He just advertised the living water. Warnings or rules or laws that are given by men do not bring transformation. If you are warned, no transformation comes from a warning. Many of us were still stuck in religion because the way the gospel was preached to us in the past, it was giving us warnings of danger. You are going to hell. Repent now, you are going to hell. That is a warning. But when Christ comes, he embraces you with his love. He advertises the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that starts to work in you to grow spiritually. When you are living in religion and warnings, you will never grow spiritually. Many of you, you have heard people who say, I won't go to church because I'm still a sinner. I don't want to deceive God. I first want to put my house in order, stop fornication, stop drinking, stop these things, and then I come to church. I'm sure you have heard many people say that. They are still depending on the well of Jacob, not the living water. Because the living water requires you to come like that. And when the well of the living water springs in you, is the one that separates. Don't do this. This is not done. This is, the fruits begin to grow by themselves. So you staying outside in the world waiting to be perfect, it means you have become like Christ. You don't need Christ anymore because you can stop it on your own. But Christ says, come like you are. Come as you are. It is the living water that cleans you. Christ requires something from you for him to give you something. Jesus is the living water, but he is approaching a woman, fetching water, and says, can I please have a drink? He is trying to say, give me what you think you know. Give me all you think you know. Give me all you have, and I will give you the living water. The prophet Elijah was told, go to a widow. I've commanded the widow to feed you. And when he arrives at the widow, he said to the widow, give me something to eat. It's a law of exchange. Give me something to eat. The woman said, no, I'm, I'm only having a little thing. And I'm just going to eat this with my child and do what? And die. But in her being obedient to surrender to Elijah, brought abundance in a home. The law of exchange, breathe in, breathe out. You are doing it now. You breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. And the trees are also taking what? That carbon dioxide, right? To give you. If you breathe in and stop breathing, you will die. So life comes when there's an exchange. You breathe in, you breathe out. The tree breathes in, it also breathes out. That's exactly how Christ operates in our lives. He requires something from you. It can be surrender only. When you surrender, that's when he starts working in your life. God said to Moses, what is it that is in your hand? Moses said, a stick. God said, throw it down. Moses threw it down and the stick turned into a snake. So God made a stick to turn into a snake, but God did not bring the stick. He required the stick from Moses. Moses alone could not turn it into a snake, but with God's partnership, 
Exchange. Give me the stick. I'll give you the power to make the stick to be a snake. So give me a drink. And I'll give you living water. So Christ is saying, give me religion. Pour it away. Throw it away. Do away with doctrines of men. And I'll give you what will teach you and make you operate in the same power I operated, which is the Holy Spirit. God does not attend any church. But here in the world, we are divided because of names of churches. When you are wearing a wristband or a sticker, or you are having a sticker, I judge you that, oh, these ones, they are from this church. I must separate from them. That's what we do as churches. In the taxis, in the malls, when I see you wearing a certain wristband of a prophet I don't like, I also mark you as an enemy. Which means the Holy Spirit is not at work. Because even if we are having differences as believers, what must unite us is love. And love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you struggle with unforgiveness, when you struggle with love, check the living waters if they are flowing in you. Which means check if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The problem is we are trying to forgive people by our strength. No, let me cry a bit. Then I'll forgive them. That is the human nature. You are going to cry a river. But when the Holy Spirit worketh in you, it becomes easy. It is difficult because we still remember in the flesh, but this person did this to me. That is the well of Jacob not the living water. The well of Jacob kept the people coming daily to fetch water. But the living water, Jesus said clearly, that you shall never thirst again. When you are living in religion, surviving from the well of Jacob, like this woman, you are going to drink the water, the water will take away the thirst. But the thirst will come back again tomorrow. So which means it's just a temporary relief of your problem. But the living water, the Holy Spirit, does not quench your thirst. It goes to what causes you to have thirst. And then it deals with that root cause. So that the thirst will not come again. That is why when you try to stop sin without the Holy Spirit, we won't say you stopped. You paused. By your own strength, I'm going to stop this sin. I'm going to stop fornication. I'm going to stop adultery. I'm going to stop this by your strength. We won't say you stopped. You just paused. It is only the Holy Spirit that helps you to get complete deliverance from anything that masters your life. My prayer is that all of us as believers, we should be like the Berean church. Whatever is spoken from the altar, you too as a believer must go and search the scriptures. If what is spoken by the apostles is true, that's what they were doing. When they hear the apostles who were walking with Jesus, they would still go back. What apostle Peter pray, preached? What apostle James preached? What John preached? Is it in line with the revelation or its observation? That is the fight that Jesus was having with the Pharisees. Because the Pharisees were not impacted by the living waters. All their doctrines were because of the law of old. They always referred, our fathers said, our church said, in the history it said, and the Holy Spirit, I mean Jesus is trying to say, no, I have come now to show you a better way of thinking, a better way of living. Because the danger is, he who said thou shalt not kill is the same who said thou shalt not steal. So if you break one law, you have broken all of them. It's there in your Bible. So Jesus was saying embrace spirituality for there is no condemnation when the Holy Spirit liveth in you. But when you live according to the law, you are going to be condemned if you break one law. Jesus is saying to you today, embrace the Holy Spirit which is the living water, 
so that the spring of living water wells up in you, inside of you. When the well rises inside of you, fruits are going to come. Fruits of the Spirit. Christ is crying out to many of us today that we have passed times from the word of God, from the law, until we came to the prophets, until we came to the time of Christ. And when Christ was about to be taken, he said to the disciples, I'm not going to leave you alone. When I go, my father is going to send another helper, comforter, the Holy Spirit. And he will remind you of everything I taught you. He will teach you. But the church today ignores the gift that has been sent to us. We are like the Pharisees and the scribes. We are still holding on to the rules, to the laws of men, the laws of observation, not the laws of revelation. There should not be division from you as a believer because the Holy Spirit is not a spirit of division. There should not be hatred of others who are believers when the Holy Spirit is in you. Because the Holy Spirit is not a spirit of hatred. So a doctrine that makes me as a pastor to come and say, don't go to that church. It's not a church of God. Don't go to that man of God. He is not a man of God. Don't go to that prophet. He is not a prophet of God. The Holy Spirit does not minister like that. The Holy Spirit teaches you how the Holy Spirit operates so that when the spring of the well of the Holy Spirit forms up in you, it is easy for you on your own to see that there is danger here. Here I am not supposed to go. Without me telling you that don't go here. But in the end times, the message keeps on saying, don't go here. Don't do this. These people, these people are bad. These people are bad. Some people even claim that is the ministry that God gave them to show the church who is bad. But the Holy Spirit does not advertise Satan. The Holy Spirit does not advertise Satan. The Holy Spirit speaks of himself so that you surrender to him, have a good relationship with him, and he opens your eyes. You have a good relationship with him, you bear fruits. You have a good relationship with him, the fruits come, love, joy, peace, all those things. But he does not come by start, start to come to you and judge you. You see, you don't have love. You are not a believer. No. He comes and says, I'm the spirit of love. Embrace me. And then you embrace, then love manifests in you. So the church is lacking in our walk with God. Lacking in power. Lacking in revelation. Because we have neglected the living waters. We have neglected the Holy Spirit. How many of us today allow the Holy Spirit to lead them wherever they go? How many of us today allow the Holy Spirit to minister to them before they enter any project? Because the Holy Spirit does not depart from us, but He can be quenched. He can be dormant. He is in you. But he's at the back seat because you have not surrendered for him to take the front seat, the driver's seat. We still want to drive the car of our life on our own. We are still connected to the system of old. And it's only the renewing of the spirit of our mind. That is needed for us to detach ourselves from the system. So this message is saying the church must surrender to the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit that removes sin. The sin you are struggling with to remove on your own. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to do that. Whatever you are praying, struggling on your own. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to do that. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes to sweep. Who comes to clean who comes to promote you, who gives you power to create wealth.
it is the Holy Spirit's job, not your job. If you yield to him, then he will start telling you, okay, the way you are walking, turn right, turn left, drop your CV at company ABC. It's the leading of the Holy Spirit. But the church, we have abandoned the Holy Spirit. We talk more about Jesus. We talk more about the word. We talk more about God. But we do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who has been poured out in the end for us to experience the same power that God, I mean Christ Jesus was experiencing on earth. Let the Holy Spirit be the driver of your life.